Hi, my YouTube friends. This is Laura, the One-Legged Witchy Woman. And here recently, I've had several people asking me about the serial killer book that I'm working on. And um, I just wanted to give you, you know, a little preview of what I'm doing. Um, a friend of mine, a couple of months ago, sent me some happy mail. And inside of it were these. There was this one, and what these are, I'm sure you can tell by looking, is a vintage album storage book or system or what, I'm not sure exactly what to call them, but um, I think they're cool. I think that so many different things can be done with them. And uh, as you can tell, this one I started working on, um, and I covered the front of it with gesso, but I stopped working on that one because the serial killer book was just chomping away at me. I am just really ready to, to get started on it. Um, you know how when you start a project, or it's you know, bubbling in your head, you have all these different design ideas of how you want it to look and what you want it to be and where you want it to go and that sort of thing. And my problem with this is it keeps changing. And I'm trying to settle on how I want to do it. And it's it's really being a pain in my behind because, like I said, I keep thinking of ways that I want to do it. I'm pretty sure I know how I want to do the cover. I want lots of, lots of texture, lots of movement, um, certainly co a conveyance of anger, fear, but all in an abstract way by using said techniques of texture, movement, color, that sort of thing. Um, but I want to show you what I got in the mail today because I do love these so much. And by the way, my friend who sent these in Happy Mail, because she was so kind to send these to me, this one, I'm going to do in a in a boho style, and I'm going to make it a storage system for like graphics and ephemera and fabric scraps and trims and laces and that sort of thing. Because um, these these pockets are pretty, you know. I'm going to cover each of these with fabric like boho fabrics and trims and that sort of thing and then so that there's no hole in it <clears throat> and then she'll have the entire pocket to fill with what she wants I think it would be great for ephemera and graphics and I do know that she has quite a bit of graphics on her so um, it would be perfect for her but anyway I want to make this one a really pretty one because, like I said, she was so kind to send these out to me, and that just meant the world to me, and I like them so much that now I'm scouring the planet to find more of them, and I found these on eBay, and these are record albums. But look how cute. Can you see that? These are not for the 33s. These are for the 45s. And I just think it is so cool. And I can un... I think... I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Yes. I can unscrew these. I can take this apart and have my way with it. <laughs> yeah. 
but um I'm not sure exactly what I'm what I want to do with these. I've had a long standing fascination with the Manson family. And I'm thinking I want to alter one of them with information about the Manson family. Uh, in 1975, when the movie Helter Skelter came out, of course I was told I couldn't watch it. And it came on at 8 o'clock, which was my bedtime when I was 5 years old. Yes, I'm old. I was born in 1970. Um, but I would get up and lay at the end of the hall and watch the movie, and it scared the bejesus out of me. And I can remember, because I was at my grandparents' house, it was during the summertime, and I can remember asking my papa, papa, it's just a movie, right? That's not real. That's not real, huh? Because I thought, you know, that Charlie Manson was terrifying. I remember the images of him with the swastika carved into his forehead between his eyes. And I just thought, what a monster. You know, monsters have never really scared me. People scare me. But anyway, um... Getting scared and seeing that movie on TV at five years old, knowing that I wasn't supposed to be watching it and watching it anyway, scared the crap out of me. And I've been fascinated. I, I'm one of those odd people with the blip on my DNA that makes me an adrenaline junkie. And because of my health and my physical condition at this point in my life, I can't do all the things that I used to love to do. Um, you know, to me, if I wasn't doing something and didn't come away from it, bleed, at least bleeding a little bit, I wasn't having fun. But um, now it's more of a mental adrenaline and um, I think there are a lot of people out there that are the same way it's just a lot of people make it sound like it's something sick or something you know and it's not it's nothing like that it's not I'm not into gore I'm not into um, blood and guts and all that kind of stuff it's the abnormal psychology it's the what the hell makes somebody tick that can do things that a normal person can't even stand the thought of, much less actually doing it? You know, you know, and it always goes back to that whole, you know, nature versus nurture type thing. Were they born that way? Were they... Um, brought up in environments that caused them to be that way. And, you know, I've read about all this stuff and studied it. I've taken a massive, ridiculous amount of psychology classes, etc., etc. I'm probably very, very close to having a psychology degree if I put all the crap together that I've taken. Um, not to mention I worked in the psychology field in my 20s with adolescents. Um, but I would say it's almost a 50-50 mixture of both. Because several, well, for instance, Jeffrey Dahmer, he was raised in a loving, well-adapted, normal household with two very loving parents he was never abused and he he stated this you know in interviews and in you know his uh, the man wanted to be put to death he knew that he was sick he knew that it was a uh, he knew it was a compulsion and he knew that if he ever 
was out, you know, not locked up and had the opportunity, he would do it again. You know, he would rape and slaughter and eat young men, which is just horrific. I mean, just, but anyway, um, that's the part of it that I'm interested in. What happened to him? You know, is it some chromosome? Is it a mass on their brain? Because, you know, they have done studies of kids with um, oppositional defiant uh, behavior disorders, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> everyone would say, they just need consistency. They just need this. They just need their butt tore up. They just, no, no. If you have never been around a child who is oppositional, defiant, which I realize the DSM-4, DSM-5, whatever, no longer recognizes that as a um, diagnosis, but... I find that ridiculous because there are so many kids who um, exhibit those behaviors and oh god I'm rambling but um but anyway uh, that's just a little background of where I'm coming from I you know I don't like the 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 gore and all that I don't want to put blood spatter and um, rape kits and, you know, that sort of imagery in my books. That's not what I'm going for. It's more of a case study. Well, not a case study because a case study is just one person, but it's more of a broad, generalized study of certain behaviors and, <clears throat> excuse me, and where I am very interested in serial killers and that sort of thing. I'm also very interested in cult leaders and, um, you know, people who are able to manipulate um, people into doing things that normally they would never do. I mean, look at Charlie Manson. He was like, he was 5'4". You know, this ugly little troll of a man. And he manipulated all of these young, pretty girls into doing things that, you know, a lot of these girls were from, you know, middle class or upper middle class families who just, they were just wayward teens. And he, you know, look what he made them do or I wouldn't say made, but manipulated them for sure. I don't think they would have done it <clears throat> on their own. But, um, but yeah, that's probably going to be one of my next projects. I have so many projects in my brain right now that I'm just kind of overwhelmed. But, uh, but I really need to get started on this one. And tomorrow night during the Elves and Witchy Show, we do that live every night on two, not every night, every Tuesday night, um, beginning at 6.30 Pacific Standard Time and uh, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, so 8.30 Central Time, 7.30 Mountain. Um, I'm going to be working in this. So I have a lot of work to do tonight as far as getting some of my research organized, typed out the way I want it. I think I'm going to do it on some craft paper. And I might, um, I don't know. I got to get to work. Though. So with that said, I am going to get started on this and tonight oh, tonight tomorrow night I will work live 
and hang out with elves and have a great time and laugh and play and work and hang out with our friends. So be there or be square. And remember, it's not on my channel. It's on BMA's Crafty Corner. That's B dash M A apostrophe S Crafty Corner. Three words. <clears throat> Go over and subscribe. Hit the bell so that you get the notifications for our lives because it's a lot of fun and it we're not teaching you anything we're not selling you anything we just want to entertain and have a good time so again with that said i will see you tomorrow night happy crafting and see you soon bye bye